FIG Ministry presents the Catholic Influencers Podcast. Join me, Alyssa Aegis, and my co-hosts, Father Rob Gallia and Justine Cumbo, as we break open the upcoming Sunday Mass readings and discuss relevant topics and life issues from a Catholic perspective. For a shorter, more reflective explanation of the Sunday Mass readings, be sure to check out our sister podcast, Catholic Influencers, Father Rob Gallia Homilies. Episode 2, Season 7. Welcome hey. again. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. And we're all together again. Usually it's one, we're together, and then for several it's just m- myself. Yeah, we <laughs> forgot to mention last episode, that's the change. The three of us, we just loved the dynamic. Mm-hmm. Less pressure on the girls to... to <laughs> Say ca- wise. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, so we thought we'll just do it all together every time. Well, it's a, it's a pleasure. Well, it's a joy times. to have both of you here. And, oh, thanks, and Rob. <laughs> but also someone else in the room. I just oh want to introduce God. you. For those of you who can see this through video, this is Cooper. Cooper's a little um, new FRG Ministry staff member. Oh, <laughs> He's a little dog. He's a Maltese What's his email suit. address? <laughs> he needs an Instagram account. I need for to get sure. it. It's still new. It's still new. So, but here's he little Cooper. So this is um, he's 800 grams, a little so tiny small. toy dog. He's smaller than me. Everyone. His favorite <laughs> hobbies. <laughs> his favorite hobbies are licking people's feet and. Ew, no, I have to kiss Sounding him. like a squeaky toy when he. Oh, he sounded like he, he was, was winking when he He's was dreaming. Um, dreaming. He was dreaming, and it's, but it's n- nice to have a dog. I had a little dog who died um, three months ago, Gozo. I miss him a lot, and but I think well, as a priest, it's important to have something to care for because it, even though we care for people, we look after people, but to have something to have to give up plans for, <laughs> it's, it's something so so um, it's so healing. I think. Um, it, like I, I, I panic even leaving the house because I'm scared I'm going to leave him alone, You're and I spend the whole dog. time <laughs> keep, keeping because uh, he's a puppy. But uh, I spend the time cleaning his his pee off the floor and making sure that his <laughs> toilet drains. You're yeah. a real dog dad. I said this to the other day. Yes, <laughs> I am. I am. I love. But they say if you are not a good father, then you won't be a good priest. You see, this is one of the things people think. Oh, what a waste, father! What a waste. You know. Well, <laughs> if but it's true. The, if, if you are not going to be a good father, if you're not a good husband, then you're, there's no way you're going to be a good priest. Mm. So I, I think it's important that... Um, yeah, so this is my fatherly instinct, <laughs> <laughs> talking about Cooper here. <laughs> Welcome, right. Cooper. Hey. Coops is going to be my name. <laughs> I'm going to buy him a cap. I'm going <laughs> to see if I can put him down here. Yeah. Okay, so Lent. We're in the season of Lent. Um, mm. Week two. Yeah. Uh, what uh, Have you prepared yourself for Lent? The, uh, Lent is a time for almsgiving, for prayer and fasting and for um there's something else. <laughs> you said them prayer and fasting. You yeah, said I'm giving prayer and fasting. Yeah, I did. That was say a them. trick question, <laughs> but we <laughs> got you. <laughs> so well, I'm going to go first. So I am um, This is the fasting. No, this is this just the, Lent um, in general, okay. right? Like I lately I've been feeling super overwhelmed with social media. Like even I follow a lot of great Catholic Christian accounts but I find myself getting super overwhelmed and it makes me overthink if I'm doing things right. If like, oh. if, is my relationship with God right? Am I going to confession right? All these things. <laughs> and so I'm going to just have a break from social media. But what? FRG ministry style. No, no, no <laughs> don't worry. I'm still very much <laughs> overseeing that. But social media the other day showed me there's one particular woman that I follow and she's amazing. And she had this video about like discovering your root sin. And then how you can attack that by practicing the opposite virtue. So, for example, if that's pride, try and grow in humility in the areas of prayer, fasting and almsgiving. So I'm going to keep it very simple in just one thing in each of those. I like that. Can you adopt something one weekend? (laughs) Because I feel like I want to take that in. (laughs) (laughs) Well, for for me, I'm traveling a lot of Lent. So I'm in um, America, Southeast Asia. I'm just, it's just uh, uh, quite hectic for me. So it's going to be difficult. But there are two things that I I am going to commit to with a a group of friends and that maybe listeners want to join in as well. Um, I'm going to try, I I say try, I'm going to do my very best to give up anything sugar and mm. anything alcohol. Good luck to anyone around you. No, <laughs> <laughs> but, and the reason I say this, uh, like usually I'd give up coffee or something as well, you know, as a fast or, but it's not going to be possible because of the different time zones and everything. I mean, but uh, yeah, I, I think I'm going to find it challenging, ex- ex- especially the sugar parts, which includes the, uh, like your rices mm. and pastas. Like fruit so sugar. 
Are no, you uh, doing the real hard? Yeah, like no sugar. Mm. I don't know. I didn't think of the fruit, but yeah, the fructose. Um, th- I think if I, I probably wouldn't do that because then that becomes more of a diet thing yeah. uh, as opposed to a fasting thing. So well, you yeah. guys have really thought about it. I'm just <laughs> I, I felt like I didn't think about it. It was like super last minute, but it? yeah. I'm just, but <laughs> I'm three people who are joining me in this. So anyone else wants to join in? Yeah, now I'll pass on that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going there, Joe. <laughs> but replace the time you would be eating the sugar, drinking the drink with prayer. Mm-hmm. You know, so like pray a decade of the rosary instead of drinking your glass. How of long wine. does it take me <laughs> to eat a Mars bar? <laughs> <laughs> I need to time all this stuff. <laughs> no, that's great. So inspiring, and I think. Um, it's good to be called on by other people's commitments too. So you're not going to tell us what you... <laughs> no, <laughs> she told you. She's going veggie. Veggie. Ah, that's okay. Hard. Veggie, that's vegetarian. I for know. Those again. Do you understand who I am <laughs> and my background? <laughs> it reminds me of, again, my big fat Greek wedding. <laughs> you don't eat no meat? <laughs> it's okay. I make it Calamari love. is your friend. Yes. Mm. And pickled fish. There you go. Round of applause for everyone. Thank Thanks for tuning in. Okay. Oh, let's check in on how we're going like in a couple of weeks' time. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Exactly. Love it. Well done, guys. So um, also, <laughs> I got stuck here in the panel. Something went wrong. <laughs> Push but, uh, all the buttons. Yeah. I'm it's glad it's impressive. you and not me. Yeah. So uh, again, thank you for joining us for this episode. We want to thank our, our sponsors as well, uh, who are our ministry partners more than anything. Thank you. If you want to know more, go to frgministry.com forward slash ministry partner. But also a great partnership um, we have is with Modern Grace. You can hear a little bit about them just now. This Catholic Influencers podcast is sponsored by Modern Grace. Modern Grace is a unique online Catholic gift store with a beautiful faith-inspired collection of gifts and homewares to bring into your life and to share with your family, friends, and faith-filled community. Stocking everything from liturgical planners, rosaries, inspiring reads, sacramental gifts, Catholic homewares, a children's collection of toys, wraps and teethers, and FRG ministry merchandise and more. Modern Grace introduces Catholic gifts which add value to your faith life for any occasion. Discounts available for stocking church piety stores, conferences and events. Just contact us online for more information. So check out their range at moderngrace.com.au and follow them on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget our very special offer on our new Catholic Influences journals. You can get 10% off two journals at ju- if you use the code, sorry, journal10 at the Modern Grace store, moderngrace.com.au. Buy the journal. Get the, Get the discount. Hello. <laughs> um, so today we're going to read from the letter of Saint Paul. Is it again? Phil the Saint Paul. We love Saint Paul. Um, but this time he's re- writing to the Filipinos. <laughs> <laughs> what? But, um, can you push that button? I can, but I'm scared to mess I, up the button. I, I need to be the button queen. <laughs> the Philippians. Philippians. So, well, I've, I've been at Mass once. Not been at I've heard of a Mass once where they said the uh, f- first uh, reading from the letter to the Filipinos. All those who have oh, wow. also been in Mass where that's happened say I. <laughs> I. I <laughs> what? Maybe, maybe this, this year. We'll see. Might be your year. <laughs> Okay, so we'll, uh, it's f- um, Philippians three, seventeen to v- chapter 4, verse 1. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as often as I have told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a saviour from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, You whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I think this, like, it's crazy that St. Paul says this every time I think. I think it's like, who 
do you think you are? You're saying? a wild one, eh? Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> that, well, it's beautiful, though, what that he says, that you could have the confidence to say that. And for those of you wondering mm. what he did say, he says, uh, he says that, unite, everybody gather, be of one mind. And you know what your one mind is? To imitate me, mm. to become like <laughs> me. Because if you want to see how Jesus is living, you want to see who God is, imitate Jesus. You want to see who Jesus is, imitate me. But it was super common in those days for teachers to refer to themselves as examples. So, like, it sounds like to us, like, whoa, this is so weird and so arrogant. random and arrogant. Like, who are you to say but that? back in those days, they wouldn't have even thought twice because it was just normal. Which is, in a sense, normal for us as well. Uh, when, for example, for preachers and teachers to be um, in public and w- when we're teaching, we're telling people how to live. Yeah. And a lot of it is through the examples we live and how the examples, the way we present ourselves, at least on social media and so on and so forth. So it does make sense, that's true. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I just found like his confidence was amazing. Um, and to th- uh, telling people, do what I do, say what I say. And because there were so many people in the so-called leadership role and Christians who weren't living as they should. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was in, the, in, the, in Philippi. Tell us a little bit about Philippi. Have you been to Philippi? I haven't. I, I went there. It's beautiful. Is it? Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. It's, it was a rich area. So it was a place where, um, uh, yeah, it was a v- just a, a, a very rich, rich place. Mm. Um, uh, but it was a place that something like it was a big trade area. Mm. Tell us more. I was just trying to figure out like, what I have to say. I, I realized what you're asking me, but now I just like <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa's lost her point on the notes. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can I just explain the <laughs> dynamics of this place here? <laughs> I am like spontaneous as like I go all over the place. I just have a train of thought and I go, Justine triggers onto something and then boom goes and get this has her notes. But Alyssa, <laughs> Alyssa is the most <laughs> organized of the lot. I'm so if sorry. I love it. Don't say sorry. No, it's no, the best. it's beautiful how we all like <laughs> <laughs> but if we don't <laughs> sort of if it's not in order <laughs> exactly <laughs> Alyssa struggles <laughs> really bad but we love it so all much. are welcome here just be patient <laughs> with me as I figure out what I'm gonna say so that's good there were a lot of people in Philippi who kind of identified themselves as Christians but they didn't really behave in a way that Christians should behave so in other words they didn't really live this self-emptying life um what else? The people there also kind of had heard the message of Christ and they heard it, didn't really change who they were and they kind of went back to their old ways of living. So um, when Paul is saying to them, don't imitate enemies of the cross of Christ, the, the people of Philippi would have known exactly he what he talk- was talking about. He was talking about Christians. Yeah. Mm. Like enemies of the cross was not the Antichrist. Yeah. It was not the political Christians leaders. Christians themselves. It was Christians themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, one of the lines that stood out to me was um, their minds are occupied with earthly things and yet again, Justine always leads with a a personal connection. (laughs) Um, But I think Paul is appealing to people who, as you said, they were once pagans, they kind of knew the faith, they once might have believed, but then they turned back to their old ways. And I think that can be each of us, any of us, at a certain point in our life like it's not a straight and upward trajectory Mm. for all of us um and i think linking it to this um exhortation to to imitate others um you really do i don't know about you guys but you become the people that you surround yourself with and likewise you don't become what you don't surround yourself with. what's that quote i think if you said it before maybe father rob the one where you are like the summation of the Closest, closest five, five people, people in your, your life. life. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, let that one yes. shock mm-hmm. you. But if it's, it might not even just be people. It is people centrally, I think, but also technology. It's what you watch. You know, if none of that has anything to do with God and then you sit there going, well, where's God in my life? Well, what have you been filling your life with? And I'm asking myself that same question. If none of that is drawing you to God, um, reminding you of God, none of it is truth, you're going to drift. It's, exactly. it's just, it's basic. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna, math. It's math, logic, <laughs> physics is what I was going to say. But um, you, you get, you know, you can run the risk of forgetting your need for God because you get sucked into the allure of things that feel good right now, you know. And I think we have to keep in mind that when we come to the Lord, when we come to meet the Lord, when we have an encounter with Jesus, and I'm not denying that these enemies of the cross, inverted commas, didn't have an encounter with Christ. Mm-hmm. Maybe they did, but they came with their baggage but they didn't let go of the baggage. Yeah, wow. See, this is the thing. Encountering Christ requires us to let go of the baggage. And let me put you into context here. So as Alyssa was saying, 
Um, it was a, a crossroad place. So people from different con- uh, countries, different parts of the world would, would come and they would meet and trade in Philippi. So it was a place where there were statues everywhere, there were um, theaters everywhere. People would come up with different ideas and it was a place where you'd go and listen to new philosophies, new gods. And so the apostles invested a lot of time in preaching there. Mm-hmm. And so they had a lot of converts, but people would come from all around the world. And part of the places that they came from were they were philosophers. They were people who had preconceived theologies. And instead of letting go of all those theologies and re- being reborn in Christ, they applied Christ to their theology wow. Now and to their philosophy. And here's the danger of this. Once you apply Christ to your theology, you create Christ in your image. You create God in your image, mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to God creating us in his image. Yes. And so we come and we think we know God. We think we know theology because we have formed him. But it, this is not only philosophy and theology. This is also the baggage we carry of the way we interpret ourselves, our self-image, the way we love ourselves, the way we have experienced God, the way... We portray, for example, God as father. We were abused by, by a father. And so we project that image to God the Father. So every time we think of the God the Father, we're angry, we're upset, we, we're, yeah. we, 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 can, we cannot approach God. So this is what the, the, these guys did in, in the Philippines. No, in the, the F- Philippi. <laughs> <laughs> they came to this idea, which was a predominant at the time, of Gnosticism. Not agnosticism, Gnosticism, which was the idea. It was very prevalent at the time. Of It was a dualist idea. Now, I'm sorry if I've lost you here. So what it's they're saying, basically, is that the body and matter, anything that is physical, is bad. Mm-hmm. And anything that is spiritual is good. Mm-hmm. That was the predominant philosophy, theology of the time. And so the message of Jesus is preached to them by St. Paul, by others, and all of a sudden they say, ah, this makes sense, yes. So Jesus came to save our soul, and he came to save our spirit. But they still had in their mind that the body was bad. So I, if the body is bad, I might as well do what I want with it. So they would still have, he mentions fornication, and they would still um, gluttony, and they would do all of this because the body is bad, it's corrupt anyway, might as well continue. Yeah. As long as my spirit is okay, as long as my relationship with God is okay. But St. Paul takes them and he says, hey guys, you are enemies of the cross. Why? Because you're one of us, you're on the inside, and you're proclaiming heresy. Yeah. You, 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 you're the, you have the wrong idea and people, if it was from the outside, that's fine mm-hmm. because people would say uh, it's easy to criticize they're not one of us but now yeah. that they're one of us. Uh, it's, it's insane and it's like a, it's such a human instinct to try and fit God into our box rather than fit ourselves into God. You know, mm. we do it the wrong way around and all of those things that these um, pagan people from the Philippi were doing it sounds really extreme like when you put it like that and we might not be able to relate to those really extreme kind of sins maybe you can but I think um, particularly if we're trying to keep ourselves in check our drift away from God might not be in one big extreme you know antichrist you know moment moment but I think more often than not from my experience and and from those who you know I've had the privilege of journeying with it's a slow but sure process of of drifting away from God because you you fill your life more and more with things that are not of God and you drain your life of things that that are God and it really um, triggered uh, um, a metaphor a parable that I've heard in the past Um, and the premise of this is is, um, that if a frog is put suddenly into boiling water and in one moment it's going to jump out if it's Mm. boiling hot water you put it in it's going to it's going to realize it straight away and it's going to jump out but if you put a frog into tepid water um, which is then slowly but surely brought to the boil it won't perceive the danger of the slow boil and its imminent death and I think it can be the same with us. We can be so unaware of these slow but sure introductions into our life. Oh, I'll just watch that movie with like, oh, it's just a little bit of sexual scenes or I'll just dabble with reading this or watching that or I don't need my Christian friends or I'll just skip going to church one week. I don't need to read or maybe you just forget to pray. You break the habit of praying and slowly but surely this water starts to boil and, and you're far from God than you ever realised. Yeah, I can tell totally, you were just speaking and I was just thinking like, Say, for example, I say I'm going to stop swearing and I like really try super hard to not do it. And I'm pretty good for a couple of weeks, like literally right after probably I've gone to confession. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be like so amazing. And then you do it once and then, oh, okay. And then it gets worse. I've totally seen this in my own life. 
Yes, Me because too. it's a compromise, a slow fade. But you see, again, this uh, the, the problem is if we allow ourselves to... You see, and th- this also comes from our perception of God. And this is what Paul is talking about here. Is that s- as Christians, we can think, oh, God will forgive me. Mm-hmm. It's just one movie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. God will forgive me. I'll come back. You know, and this, this, these are the enemies of the cross. People who are taking advantage of the mercy of God yeah. and as a result are causing people to sin. Even Jesus himself says it is better for the person to be thrown with a, a, a stone around their neck into the mm-hmm. water than it is to make the, the least, the little one of these fall into sin. And you're going to, like, scandal is caused from within the church more than it is from without. Not that yeah. we sin more, but in the sense you are more, you, you, more credible when you're in the church. But the problem is, there's a quote, which it was on, I don't know who actually said it, but there's a, an author who said it, but it was on one of my, uh, of an, anim, uh, an album of Jazz of Clay, I think it was, uh, one, um, yeah, um, but it says, um, it says this, it says, one of the biggest single causes of atheism today is Christians who proclaim Jesus with their lips, but live their lives as though Jesus doesn't even exist. Yeah. And, and so, this is this is the cause of atheism. It's not people outside um, proclaiming a, and trying to prove that, that God doesn't exist, but it's people on the inside who yeah. don't understand the mercy and the love of God. Yeah. Who people on the inside who have the wrong theology, the wrong philosophy, who have come in and never surrendered the, who they the baggage they brought in in the past to the God who is in the present. And this is where we need to. As Christians, watch ourselves as well. Because we carry baggage. You have baggage. I have baggage. We all have it. That (laughs) we come to a place and slowly we have control of it because we've pushed it aside. We have the strength to carry it. But eventually it's going to get tiring. Mm -hmm. I can't carry this anymore. And eventually I'm going to trip over it. And it's going to take over my life. And Alyssa, I think that's what you were saying. eh? That sometimes uh, it's uh, what you're carrying there, what we carry there is our baggage. And we just need to keep giving it to the cross, making mm. sure we lay it down at the foot of the cross. And n- not that Christianity gives us the easy path out of life, but fire, it's an incredible message of freedom. Like God doesn't just want to tell you, oh, forget about your problems now. Like you're a Christian. No, like actually Jesus wants us to deal with the realness and the rawness and the hurt of our life because he desires freedom for us. And Mm. so to love God is this beautiful process of healing and it's a hard process, but rather than filling our baggage with more baggage and not dealing with our baggage, you actually put God in there, you know, and and it's this journey of true freedom towards healing with him. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think another two points that I wanted to bring out, the first one our citizenship is in heaven. And so to go back to when you asked me about, mm. um, talk about the Philippians at the time, I've got another point that I can add to that. <laughs> Don't you mean that? <laughs> because is this the is, the is time when it was meant notes. to happen. <laughs> 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 Some of the Roman citizens who were living in Philippi at the time, they kind of looked to Rome as their sense of identity. So they would worship the emperor of Rome. And so Paul was telling them, hey, yes, you do live in this community. Yes, for sure. You have to abide by its laws and you're, you're in this community. But your actual ultimate citizenship is in heaven. Mm. And so it's not the emperor that you need to be worshipping, it's it's Jesus you need to be worshipping. Mm. Um, and that's, again, the same for us. Like we are in this world, but we're not of this world. We yeah. live in all the communities that we live in and we do all the th- things that we do, but at the end of the day, we weren't made for here. I think as you've said before, exactly. Justine, we yeah. were made for heaven. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So God calls us to holiness, God calls us to sanctity, and how to be holy? Look at St. Paul. Yeah. <laughs> and again, like, he wasn't um, he wasn't promoting himself, right? Like, he was oh. promoting all the awesome things that God had done through him, yeah. and he was saying to them, yes, imitate me, because God can do these amazing things for you too. And yes. so, um, and again, it's the same for us, like, the same role models that we look to that inspire us in our faith, the saints, like, that same God can work through us. Yes. Th- there was that TikTok t- tune, if I was you, I'd want to be me too. too. I, I used to sing that at my gig, too. seriously. <laughs> and I play a bit of a character when I'm at gigs and I kind of like have this super confident look about me. And the band boys used to always joke and say, this is the song all about Alyssa because <laughs> you would want to be like her. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good song. I just it w- Oh, uh, maybe I was just going to sneak in that one last thing is just community. Your, your imitators don't have to be far off people or... 
people in heaven at the moment. Like keep your imitators, people who imitate Christ close to you. Go and find community. If you don't have community, don't stop until you find a community of believers, people who are going to challenge you, grow you, love you, forgive you, be vulnerable with you, um, meet you where you are, walk with you through your mess. Go and find that Christian community because if you don't have a Christian community around you, people who are imitating Christ, you're going to have a community of other people around you who are not imitating Christ. Exactly. And where is that leading to leading you? Where do you want to end up? So fill your life with good people. And we're talking more than like going to meet the community at mass which is important but find small groups find prayer groups youth groups uh, i looked for ages for a small group and i found one finally but i looked like under mountains over mountains and i got one because i need one yes Mm. but some people cannot you know different parts of the world they cannot but listen to this (laughs) no but this is uh, again this for example we could know this through our ministry partners we could know this through our retreats that people have found community people do pray together meet together discuss Mm. together and, and so there are online communities as well that are so important. Just look out for it. Anyway, um, St. Paul, be like St. Paul, <laughs> be an example, and be, be like St. Paul as an example to others. When people see you, let them see Jesus. Encounter by FRG Ministry presents our online subscription package. As a member, you will receive digital on-demand access to Encounter's growing library of online courses. Encounter and Encounter Youth online courses cover teaching, devotional, and practical elements of the Catholic faith to help individuals, teachers, students, and parishes across the world grow in their faith and understanding of the Catholic Church and their relationship with Jesus Christ. Current titles include Knowing Mary, School of Prayer, Introduction to the Bible, The Mass, and more, with new courses being added regularly. All Encounter courses include high-definition videos with expert and engaging speakers, testimonies from everyday Catholics, and downloadable content including interactive PDF guides, prayer cards, and wallpapers. These courses are also accredited for professional development for Catholic education staff in Australia. All Encounter youth courses include teaching videos, interactive student and teacher PDFs with lesson plans, and guided prayer and reflection. For more information about enrolment and subscription options, head to www.encountercourses.com slash subscription. Be sure to follow us on social media on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Encounter Courses. Week two of the jingle, what do you want to say? Can I take a selfie? (laughs) Yeah, so I guess in light of this <laughs> conversation about Rome, I've got Cooper on my leg. <laughs> my leg. Um, That's the dog. That's the dog. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, in light of this conversation about role models and using our lives as an example, is it okay to take a selfie or is it like super vain? Yeah, like, first of all, let's define, <laughs> can I dare to come back to you, <laughs> to w- define oh. vanity. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I feel like vanity and pride are kind of like these interchangeable terms, but I just learned the proper definition today, right? Um, pride, I guess, is where we think really highly of ourself, um, where we think we're better than others or mm. look how amazing I look, kind of look at me, look at me, look at me. Whereas vanity is where we put the opinions of others Whereas like what people think of us above the opinion of what God thinks of us, right? Like where we've sent, we place our sense of security in what others think of us. Yeah. So, so like in terms of like a, taking a selfie and posting it, if you're going to do that from a sense of pride, it would be, hey, look at, look at how amazing I am. Whereas if you're doing it from a place of vanity, it's like, please give me all the likes and the... I yes. need your likes yeah. to validate yes. who and I am. I won't feel good about myself Unless. or I will delete it mm-hmm. if I don't get enough likes or enough yes. comments. What's that quote that everyone does? Like, uh, might yeah. delete later. Might delete later. <laughs> feel cute. <Yeah>. Might delete <laughs> later. <laughs> I think when you ask the question, can I take a selfie? I, I want to first pose a, um, a question before that. And it's where does your sense of security and identity come mm. from? Before you can answer, is it moral to post a selfie is where where does your (laughs) (laughs) that's a great (laughs) accent yeah thank you thanks guys um i think it's just so important to be so firm and so secure in this that 
Heaven is our citizenship, as we've been speaking about today. So our source of security and our identity is in Jesus Christ. Full stop, amen, hallelujah. Put another full stop. And not, not, in, not in Lent. Well, no, the A word. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. Ooh. <laughs> I, I was on a roll. He, she used the A word. In <laughs> I was on a roll and I forgot. <laughs> All right. Um, don't cancel me, okay? <laughs> don't cancel me. Um, so, you know, our sense of security and identity is not in what other people think of you, the likes, or even the hate mail or the hate comments. That's not where yeah. your identity comes from. You're not going to let me you live that down, are you? You keep <laughs> looking at me. I'm sorry no, no, I said no. the A word, guys. <laughs> um, so I think that that's just really important to remember. And I think to ask yourself the question, why are you posting this selfie? Mm. Just re- But actually be honest with yourself. Is, is what I'm posting bringing glory to God? You know, is what I'm posting, is it honouring who God has created me to be? You can post a picture of yourself by all means. Be confident in who God has created you to be. But why are you really posting it and if you if you're okay with your answer to that by all means yeah. post. I th- and also uh, the criticism a lot of the criticism you get let's say you post you have the confidence to post a selfie for example i'll be honest i post a, a, a gym selfie no. <laughs> i post a lot <laughs> no, no, i was just joking <laughs> that's true but i post a gym selfie and the least thing honestly on my mind is like oh look at me but it's more my motive at that point is here this this is a, a good photo and i'm going to inspire others to make sure that they're exercising or whatever. It's inspired me. And it works, right? It totally works (laughs) when you don't want to go to the gym and you're scrolling and you see, oh, he's at the gym and he's doing it. Yes, I'm going to just go The first reaction is, oh, I feel bad. I haven't been to the gym for three days. Put the cheeseburger (laughs) down, Justine. (laughs) (laughs) But a lot of people will interpret it in their eyes. Mm -hmm. If if I were to post it, it would be because I am proud. It is because I... And so sometimes you can't worry about what people think of you. Do you like Justine, what you were just saying, assess yourself, check. Yeah. And it's important to check your motives. Yes. But at the end of the day, people are going to judge. They're going yes. to judge through the eyes of their pain, through the yes. eyes of their, their own experience. And if they were in this situation, what would they do or not yes. do? Yes, I have the, the voice of my, I love my dad, Charles, if you're listening. Charlie. Charlie Kumbo. <laughs> um, he always used to say to us, and it's ingrained in me, and I thank him for it, and I thank God for it. When we were kids, if ever we were complaining about someone or a situation or something, he'd always say, Justine, you cannot judge. Mm-hmm. And it's such a challenge, particularly to... Like, you know, just that, that to use common language, the haters, you know, yeah. the haters out there who are just going to troll and assume the worst in you and post something that assumes the worst. How about we assume the best of people? Yeah. How about we don't judge? How about we assume that, you know, Father Rob's posting a gym selfie because he actually genuinely wants to inspire people to yes. do that. And be it, ju- be it a s- selfie, be it um, or so- something else, no, an achievement or something, whatever. Yeah. So... I think it's important, but also at the same time, on the other side, on the flip side of the coin, it's so important to show our humanity because then the other side is where we are so fearful of showing ourselves and being the example and mm-hmm. being the witness that we all we end up posting is not necessarily bad, but is holy pictures and uh, yeah. things like that, and, and and safe photos, yeah, safe pictures, safe things, or even if they're controversial, the, you, you're following accept that it's socially acceptable within your following Mm -hmm. and you it becomes impersonal so impersonal while as saint paul did paul invested in himself it was he became the witness not his holy pictures yeah not only it and so it's important social media as an example is an opportunity for us to be an example to the world as saint paul was an example to the world yeah show when you're praying i'm not saying every time you pray that you you're setting up the camera i agree and i want to um flip this a little bit and, and kind of be a little bit vulnerable as well because i think i've struggled with the opposite um probably not vanity or being full of myself, but, you know, a bit of my story is that um, I really struggle with what I look like. I've, I've had things go on in my life that have been quite hurtful and um, I have pretty low self-esteem. So sometimes um, sharing of a photo of myself now that I'm, you know, trying to really claim and honour who God has created me to be, sometimes sharing a photo of myself is me trying to challenge myself to love who God has created me to be, yeah. a challenge mm. to for me to accept who God has created me to be instead of hiding under the lie and the insecurity and the hurt that that I'm ugly or that, um, you know, I'll never, you know, that, that 
just the comments of people in my life that have been made that have hurt me, instead of hiding behind that, I want to hide under God's truth, which is that I can be confident in him and it doesn't matter what other people think about me. So I, I think we have to, again, it goes back to that judgment Ju- thing. I was going to say you that. have no idea what people have um have gone through in their life but for me it's also claiming the confidence of Christ like for a long time I would never post any pictures of myself or I'd always hide behind someone else and that's not healthy Uh, that's hiding who God has called me to be so you know it's 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 kind of a different take um it's not always attention seeking it's not always um you know yes for a a self-centered reason Yeah. yeah I feel like there's been two things we've been talking about tonight like today your our perception of what other people posting selfie like we shouldn't be judging like their motives behind it but also checking our own motives as well i yeah. think this is where it becomes it, the taking the selfie itself is not an issue if you're doing it for the right reasons yes if it becomes more about oh, i've got to get the perfect selfie or let me quickly check how many likes i'm getting or oh, check it again five seconds later check it again five seconds later like that's when it can lead to becoming yeah. sinful. And not only sinful, this is destroying you. Mm. Yeah. It's becoming a fixation. And and uh, yeah, in that case, then maybe that could be your Lenten fast to mm. not to take a selfie yeah. <laughs> for for um until y- yeah, you, you sort that out. Because at the end of the day, y- you it can destroy you um if yeah, if it's not uh, in the right place. I was gonna say one more thing actually. Um so we are living in the age of selfies, right? Like, so it's kind of like the language of the times. And so if our faith can be shared that way, like, mm-hmm. and we, our faith can be caught by others who may not necessarily have faith, well, then we should be there, but doing it in the right way with the right motives. Yes. I'll take my next selfie with Cooper. I'll get more oh, likes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cooper has been wandering around licking everyone's feet. This little and puppy dog. I can be proud and think, oh, look at all the likes they have. <laughs> They're <laughs> all for Cooper. They're just Cooper. It's just yeah. for Cooper, not for you. Yeah. <laughs> You're exactly. old news. <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, beautiful to have Cooper as my, make sure you like my Instagram post. <laughs> you better do it. <laughs> we'll check in with you next week. <laughs> But thank you for listening to this episode two. We'll uh, see you again next week. But until then, please be in touch with us at frgministry.com forward slash podcast. And Justine is going to tell us the rest. Podcast. Tell you what, if you just search Catholic influences, <laughs> you'll find a lot of stuff. Um, and all the info is basically at frgministry.com forward slash podcast. podcast. We love you guys and we'll see you next week. God bless. Ciao, ciao.